Welcome to Daily Watch Talks, number 152. Um, and uh, we have a lot to discuss. We are going to share with you some insights, thoughts, and observations on uh, the current auction season. And of course, a lot of novelties. There's a lot of novelties. Yeah. Um, and with that, I was with uh, Nomos. Yeah. Came home last night. Uh, so that was um, they had uh, seminars uh, or summits, if you like, the forum, yeah. for uh, for four days in a church, because Nomos, you know, they produce their watches in in uh, in Glashütte. They own a church in Glashütte. So it was funny to see uh, one of the CEOs, Uwe, standing as a minister within the church, talking to his community, us, the press. They came up with two uh, really good looking. I have to admit. Uh, no matter the light, they are really good looking. So they have this blue that they call a polar and they have a petrol, which is greenish. It's weird to call it a petrol because it's actually more green. So it's a 37 club. Yeah. Uh, it's a great, great looking watch with a perfect bracelet and the price of 2750 Again, just emphasizes how can, you know, the, the, the prices of Nomos watches can be so good when the watches are also better than good. But, you know, having a look at the manufacturer and they're admitting that, you know, they're so transparent, I hope. They're doing 95% in-house, just a little, you know, like a kilometer outside Glashütte's, but still within the region. So it's still very much made in Glashütte. So wait, you have the club, 37 millimeter mm -hmm. steel, steel bracelet, mm -hmm. Neomatic. It's a Neomatic, yes. For 2,700. 2,780 euros. That is a damn good but it's true. interesting because yeah. I, I, I sat next to Uber, the CEO, at the dinner on, on, the, on the night I arrived. <laughs> and you know me, I always want to know the production numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, he's a super, super nice guy. He's, you know, soft-spoken, you know, he likes his wine, he's a good guy. And he says, we do a little more than Lange and a lot less than Rolex. So that's between 4,000 and a million pieces, approximately. What was really interesting, they have a lawyer uh, who did a long speak in German, it was like translated in my headphones, about the importance of made in Glashütte. It isn't as important as Swiss made. And uh, they have been fighting for, for, for the regulations and Lange, Glashütte Original, Nomos, Tutima, Moes, Großmann, etc., etc., they all have to produce within those criteria that we know from the Swiss made criteria as well. Okay. Right now, it's 50% of, of the work carried out in Glashütte and, yeah. and the region just around. Glashütte is really uh, the centerpiece of German watchmaking. It's mm. a small uh, town. I think it's about 3,000 inhabitants. And they have 10, at least 10 uh, watch brands that I know of. Yeah, and they're all in the same proximity. So when you are at the square with the, with the, uh, the, the the center of the town, you see all the brands in your view: Tutima, Lange, Glashütte Original, Moritz Grossmann, Nomos, and so on. Union. So it is really, uh, yeah, it is really an important place outside of Switzerland where uh, where watchmaking is in, in very high esteem. Yeah. Then you brought um, uh, Linde Wörtlin. Yeah, it's all about the anniversaries. Uh, Linda Wörtlin is turning 20 this year. So yesterday when I came back home, that was, this was on my doorstep. Well, it was not on my doorstep. Of course, it was inside my home. This is the Octopus Moon 3DTP uh, black ink. And um, it's the moon face as we know it. Yeah. But on the other moon faces, it, it, it looked like the photography of the moon from 1969. Whereas this is more graphic, this is more white. Uh, but, you know, the dial is like really, really dark and uh, the carbon fiber makes it really light. Without the strap, it's 60 grams. So another cool watch from uh, from Linda Bertelin. Uh, they are really doing well. Uh, and this is a cool, it's not a line extension, it's just another material for the moon face. So it's around 20,000 euros. If this was an AP, it would probably be 40,000. I must admit, I have the deepest respect for Jorn in how yeah. he keeps the spirit going on with the brand, uh, which still has and keeps and maintains a unique position in horology. So uh, kudos to Linda Wörtlin. Uh, a few weeks ago, we uh, already discussed with you um, the, the George Daniels pieces that will be auctioned on November 6 with Philips in Geneva. Yep. We even touched them or almost touched them 
uh, at a private dinner here in Copenhagen because the watches are, are, are making a world tour. They're that important. But the auction on November 6 is more than the three Danielses. So we, we leave the Daniels now because we already treated them. I wrote down a few pieces that I think from a personal point of view are interesting that will yep. be auctioned uh, November 6. I want to start with the Zenit Wutilainen Philips yeah, one. You like that one, huh? I like that one. And you probably remember that earlier this year, there was this announcement by Philips that they initiated a watch, a very limited edition of 10 pieces by Zenit, uh, finished by Wutilainen. And, and, and the center of the watch is a unique uh, movement, um, uh, the 1350 from 1953. Actually, it's a caliber that was in those days a serial winner and won many prizes, more than 230 observatory prizes, including the one in, in Neuchâtel. The story is that Orel and his team asked Zenit if they still had any of those movements around. And to their surprise, they had a few. So they asked Kari Wutilainen to, uh, to finish it, to make it uh, up to date in terms of looks. Same for the dial. And they made 10 pieces sold out quickly. Now they have an 11th one. Of course they do. And there is something unique on this one. It's not only the dial color, which is salmon. It's also the case material. It's nobium. This one, it's a unique piece. Um, the, the proceeds will go to, to charity. Mm -hmm. And uh, the expectation is 100 to 200,000 Swiss francs. So probably it will be more because we know Philips is always conservative in their estimations. But we'll see. I think it's a very interesting piece. I like it. A few Pateks, a 24.99, and a, a perfect trio of 59.70s in all the materials. Mm -hmm. They will come out at auction as well. Mm. Uh, a Vuti line, a chronometer in, in a square case, which is quite unique. I'm not too worried about the unique pieces. They will probably reach records. I, th I think the 5970s, we, we saw one of them uh, when, uh, when yeah. Philips was visiting here in Copenhagen. Yeah. To me, that's the perfect watch. I think the legibility, the size, the Lemania movement inside, that to me is, as Alex Gottby actually said uh, while we were talking, it's the perfect one watch collection. I still think it's, it's one of the, the most beautiful watches ever made. Everything on that watch is absolutely perfect. Christie's is doing a legendary watches collection sale also on the 6th or the 7th um, and what what I noticed there it's it's actually a, a large part of the lots are uh, from one collection from a, a serial collector and um, what what struck me was a co beautiful collection of 12 Chirac Perigo pieces oh, we like Chirac Perigo 12 all not vintage but pre-owned all from the early 2000s with a strong focus on the Ferrari pieces. Mm. And then you know Ferrari and Girard Perico, it's probably not the most collectible of watches, but this is actually interesting because there are some unique pieces. One is a unique square tourbillon mm. with a red uh, dial and Ferrari logo, which is quite unique. Nice. But he's also bringing in a unique FP Journe titanium, uh, sorry, a platinum uh, centigraph in red, also with the Ferrari logo. And on the Journe, that's, um, well, that's, uh, that's a one-off. Who convinced Mr. F. P. Journe to do that? He must be a strong talker. Well, actually, uh, uh, I was with Journe, you know, uh, a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we discussed, okay, what is the strategy of Mr. Journe? How does he get from 1999 to here? Mm -hmm. And then on the one hand, they said, well, he is very, he's a strong personality. Yes, of course. he is. He, he is. knows everything. It seems like everything is planned from year to year. And then I ask, okay, but why did they do in 2010 uh, an aluminium watch with the logo of Jean Alessi and the Indy 500? <laughs> and then they said, well, Mr. Jean Alessi is a friend. That's the reason. So you have to be <laughs> you have to be a friend of the house to get those art pieces out. Yeah. See, would I like uh, the 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 horse on a on a uh, My answer would be no. No, absolutely not. What else is at the auction? A unique Parmigiani, Toric piece, unique minute repeater with a Westminster chime. Fuck. <sighs> See, the thing is, we probably would not have gone ape shit on that two years ago. No. No. Uh, but I think what, what is happening, we're not going to repeat ourselves about our love for Parmigiano these days. 
but it's just really important. And this is how you remake a brand. True. You become extremely collectible at auctions. People start looking at Chrono 24. I did that recently, and the prices are going up. This one is out of my reach, to be honest. It's 80 to 120,000 Swiss francs uh, estimate. Um, but, but that's a Westminster gong. Let's say it, it hammers super, at 18. Yeah, I'm really, wow. uh, I'm, I'm following that one with, with, with a specific interest to see how the market responds. And mm -hmm. if the market picks up yeah. Parmigiani uh, uh, at auctions, they certainly deserve it. So let's, uh, let's see uh, what happens there. Um, yeah, another one, and that's one of my favorites. I know you like it too. It's a Grande Complication IWC from the early 90s. That is really a, a childhood hero. But that was back one of the, you know, that was big complications of IWC back then. That yeah. was a super expensive watch. Yeah, it was It was back then already 100,000 plus. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. It's 250. Yeah. So much? it was a very expensive watch. I, yeah. I had it at an expo in 2010, I think. And they came up, you know, with the special box, and I, I could have it on the expo for about two days. Mm. And back then it was two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm like, okay, that was, you know, in two thousand and ten. That was super expensive. That was super, one of the most expensive, probably. And yeah. right now it is uh, um, around sixty, eighty is the market value. Really, a lot of money. But that's pre-owned, of course. Of course, yeah, pre-owned. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we'll see. Uh, that's about it. I heard also a press release by Christie's uh, that they auction a vintage Patek with Cartier on the down. Nice. So that's retailed by Cartier. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's double name that matters. That's double name that matters and you won't see them that often. No. So that will be a, that will be a blue chip uh, watch coming up. I think, yeah, that's about it. Of course, lots of others. I invite you, uh, just for fun, if you have a spare hour in the weekend, uh, check the, the Christie's website, check the Philips website, and browse through uh, watches that you dream of or that you're probably planning to, to bid on, because uh, next month it's, uh, it's there. Let's Please talk go. about Longshin. Longshin has a yeah, 190th yeah. Uh, anniversary this year, and uh, they've come out with some really nice pieces. The most recent one and the last one that celebrates the 190th anniversary is a record chronograph. So it's a 40 millimeter. It has a gorgeous black face and gilt hands and markers and a touchy meter, which is quite unusual. Uh, and it just, it oozes this 40s, 50s look and design. It's 40 millimeters, as, as I mentioned. It's Kosk, which the, I think some of the heritage uh, chronographs they uh, tend to be. And it has a silicium hairspring, and it's 3,100 euros. It's not an in-house movement. Longshin no. do not yeah. do, no. but they have ETA do movement modifications for them that is only used by Longshin. This one is not the exception. I like the purity they, they put into, especially their, their, their chronograph pieces. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a super cool brand. Yeah. Another fun thing that is not going through the roof in terms of, of pricing, but in terms of fun, mm -hmm. it's the Takoya Mario Kart. That is a chronograph and a tourbillon at around, let's just say the price for it's 25,000. So 25,000 may sound expensive, but if you consider it's the Hoya Zero Two uh, in-house movement and also it has a tourbillon, then you would probably reconsider if you claim it, it was expensive. It's, it's, it's work done with Nintendo and um, Mario. The details on the tourbillon, which we will show right here, is fun. Nothing but fun. And it made me consider if this is an inexpensive competitor to the Richard Mill smiley. If you look at that asshole Putin, what he's doing right now, I think we need fun. We need colors, we need bright watches, we need the fun on our watches, so we look at it, we forget to look at the time, but we just smile. I didn't know it was, it actually existed. I had no press release. No, it Jaguar. was just there. It was just there. I, I had actually, no idea. Actually, they released two, right? They also yeah, there's also a chronograph. Yeah, a chronograph. So the chronograph yeah. is... Well, the, the chronograph tourbillon is 250 pieces. Okay. So the chronograph is a lot more. Uh, it's around 4,000 euros, I think. So you expect maybe that in the next period of time we will, we will see more extrovert, fun watches, bright colors, something that, that we, because we need that smile. The Mad Gallery Royal Oaks with pink and they were coated, of course, pink and light blue and yellow, coated, obviously, because it was, it was coming off. But I thought, is this a... a is this a fake? Is it a homage? Or what is it? No, no, no. It was Mad Gallery in Paris who... Um, 
Yeah, who made these uh, special editions. Really, really cool. But also with that the was concepts, fun. They, that they, was fun. They, they do add a touch of, at least a touch of, out of the ordinary. The well, the Marvel too. is probably fun to some people. Yeah. The Royal Oak also or Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I forgot about that one. That yeah. is actually fun. And I saw when I was visiting uh, AP recently, I saw a case back with a Star Wars engraving. That is fun. Of course, that is individually customizations. Something we're going to talk about very soon. Yes. Let's, uh, uh, Let's yeah. keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind. We will come up with something very special with a brand pretty soon. Yeah. One other thing that I really, really like is the Art Deco alphabet that Shishli Kultra came up with. There's a lettering artist called Alex Trote. Uh, he came up with this beautiful alphabet. And he created the whole, of course, inspired by Art Deco. It's called the 1931 alphabet. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is gorgeous. Again, it's not fun. It's just brilliant and it fits the Reverso collection so well, 1931. Yeah. And of course, it inspires to use that a typography when you engrave the protective case back of a Reverso, when you turn it around and it doesn't have a dual function there, of course. And then you use that alphabet for getting your initials or a love you message or something like that. It is so elegant. It's so elegant and I didn't see it coming. And it was just a really great press release from Cecil Lekulta coming up with that. One uh, other great for them was that they now have Anya Tay Joy yeah. as the ambassador. Uh, I love her. The Queen's Gambit. My son and I, we just ate that series. That is a brilliant series. It's, it's, uh, she's a great addition to a great and elegant maison. In but that's there. also inspiring in, in, in hard times. Fun is not only about bright colors and, uh, and, and Pac-Man or, or Mario. <laughs> it's, it's also about beauty. Yeah, and a brand, like, like, a brand like Cheche Le Coutre is about beauty. Hmm. Beauty of watchmaking, beauty of the looks, the size, the designs. If you haven't seen it yet, it's from 2020. It's a really great Netflix uh, series. Uh, Queen's Gambit about a female chess player that wins the world. It's good to know that we're now also for our audience have uh, this uh, usual weekend binge advice yep. on Netflix. Yeah, next week we will come up with something else. These days when I'm in my rowing machine in the morning, I watch an episode of Breaking Bad. Never a dull moment. That is always good. As one thing, we, one second. last thing. Yeah. Bremont. Bremont? Yeah. You, you shared it with me this morning and yeah. I saw it passing by. I, mm -hmm. I have to admit, Bremont is always out of my scope somehow. Mm. But Mine this, too. This is really a good looking watch. Okay, that's what you think. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think it's an $8,000 good looking watch? That's one of my, the challenges with Bremont, I always think they're overpriced. We don't know enough about the brand. No, that's, I had that. But that's they have made their mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the problem with the, with grumpy uh, journalists, we never ever forget the mistakes. Like when Takoya claimed they had an in-house movement, it turned out it was a Seiko, yeah. which they bought the rights for to produce. And, and when uh, Bremont came out and said they had an in-house movement, it was not. But they are definitely doing their deeds to bring back uh, uh, British watchmaking, which I appreciate a lot. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, invest a bit more time in Bremont. Yeah, somehow. Sure. Because they we should probably it. go there. We should go there. We should have a talk. So Bremont, if you're listening, yeah, send us open. an invite. We'll come over and have a chat with you guys. Go to the pub and discuss your horology. Okay, and for the rest, uh, everyone, thank you for listening. Uh, please uh, share the comments with us. We see that the comments are a bit declining these days, but we're continuing anyway, and we would l we love the discussion with you, either on YouTube or Instagram or everywhere. Please do. And also, tell us what Netflix series you like to watch, because we also need to binge something once yeah, in a while. Yeah, I need some advice there as well. Downloading yeah. for watching in the planes. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.